Hello, Theo. Arjun. Theo. There, there, the boys. How are you? How are you doing? So uh, you're in Amsterdam today? Yeah, yeah. That's great. Have you? Uh, I'm sure you've been before, right? We've never been. First ever time. And so it's been quite. It's quite exciting because the album's kind of done really well here and stuff. So it's good to um, finally understand why. <laughs> Okay, so so thanks guys, thanks so much for making time to speak with me. So I'm actually I'm a Dutch blogger, but I'm based in the U.S. So it's wow. really in interesting because I, I'm sure you've seen the tweets and the messages on Facebook. You have a lot of fans here in the U.S. US as well. It's, well, it's amazing, really. We've never because we've been so kind of um, locked caught up in Europe and, and the success here. It's it's uh, America very interesting. Very interesting to know that the music connects. So guys, congratulations with the release of the album, Happiness. The Road to Happiness Hurts. Yeah, and very, that, very good, very good. Um, you know, I first started blogging about, uh, about you guys, uh, I think it was about a year ago, or in the fall of 2009, when I first uh, saw Wonderful Life, the video. Wow, thanks very much. And uh, I was really captivated by, by the sound and the look, and it was, it was so different from everything else that's out there right now. Um, how, how quickly did the album come about? Well, Wonderful Life was part of, we wrote three songs in, in February and March of last year, 2009. And Wonderful Life was the middle one of those songs. Um, and then we made a video for that. And then a few months after that, that's when we signed our record deal and began work on the rest of the album. It came about very naturally at the beginning because we didn't really know we let the songs dictate who we were because we just wrote the songs and then went, okay, maybe this is this is who we are as a band. And it was um, made it all come together and, and and also doing everything ourselves, like the videos and and the, and the kind of all the way the aesthetics of it all coming from us makes it natural because pop music needs to be um, needs to be individual, it needs to be done in its own little way, it needs to be great. Right, exactly. So what, what was the song that started it all for you guys? I mean, what was the first song you wrote? It was def it was Unspoken with Hurts. That was the first time that both of us did really what we wanted to do. The music was very expansive and that was the kind of music I always wanted to make when I was younger. And um, once we had that song, we knew that we had a blueprint for the rest of the for, for Hurts. Really. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then it was amazing that that song. Yeah, we didn't think about anything before, and that song then dictated the rest of the song we wrote. Right. So you were inspired by by disco lento, right? Italian yeah. uh, synth pop from Italian, the late eighties. Italian people in general, Arjun, as we, as we just said. But it was more, I think, the kind of European pop music is very interesting to us because it's uh, a lot of it's based on emotion as opposed to lyric, and I think. One amazing thing is we put a lot of that into ours, and it's connected in lots of different countries that don't speak English. And I think that's, it's. I think if you put your 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 own emotions into it, people can connect with that. And Italo disco and Lento were very much very similar things to that. I think they did. There was there was ambition there. There's another there's another side to the pop coin which people don't get a chance to see very often. Pop music doesn't have to be dumb. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be soulless. It's. Uh, it's a great thing that should be celebrated, and there's always two sides to the coin. There was the Spice Girls and there was Oasis, and we've got Jason Derulo and Tyler Cruz, but there's another side. The, what, so who, who would represent the other side? It hurts. Ah, I knew that, and I knew that was coming. <laughs> you, have any, you have any thoughts about Lady Gaga? Are you a big fan? No, we love her. Huge fan. She's, she's, a, she's a diamond in the rough. She's somebody who does her own thing and doesn't compromise it for anybody. And that's, um, she makes great pop music. So it's something to be celebrated in the world of pop music. She's the other side of the coin as well. She displays the other side of the coin very well. You know, you, you guys are not only becoming very famous because of your music, but also sort of the styling and, and the look and, and your fashion. Um, so mm. how, how deliberate was that? Like the way that you dress? I mean, how much of a concept was that? The interesting thing about it is that what makes it cool for us is that we used to dress like this when we had no money. <laughs> Before we had a record deal, we used to wear the exact same clothes as now. So that makes it even even better for us. Yeah, because it, what, when we were we were employed for three years and we had um, 
every day we have to we, we have to kind of find a purpose. When you're making music, but you're kind of chasing a dream, and it's very demoralising. You have no dignity, no pride left. And but if you wear a suit or a shirt, you feel like you can conquer the world. So did you bring your hair comb too? Because I've seen that too in interviews. I'll get it out for you, Arjun. Here we go. <laughs> ah, there it is. If this is the this is the comb that I asked for when we signed our record deal. Oh, it is. And Adam asked for an umbrella, but he hasn't got the umbrella. So this but, is what you carry around with you all the time. Put it over my eyes and screen. Yeah, all the time because it reminds me that one that I have to look my hair looks all the time, but also it reminds me that I made it. Right, you made it. So there's yeah. no there's no hair gel here. This is you can just do that. There is hair gel. It's constantly hair gel, but a comb can get you out of any situation possible. If you've got a massive hangover, or or if it's windy outside, get the comb out, and then everything's fine. So when you uh, so you met uh, outside of a bar in uh, Manchester, right? You were uh, you ended up in a fight. We didn't fight. Oh, you didn't fight. You were watching the fight. Yeah. So you started to talk about music, or what? what, what how? We talked about. It, straight away, even though we were drunk, well, I remember we made crucial decisions. We decided we were going to make music together. We knew it was going to be a bit like Prince. So all the, all the best decisions were made in the, on the first meeting. Yeah, we decided we wanted to write pop music on the first meeting. You can learn a lot at four o'clock in the morning when, because <laughs> you're honest at that point. You found you you don't hold anything back. You want to make pop music. Yeah, and then, but there was a lot of conversation of what music. You I'd say something and Adam go that shit, and then I'd say what about you? And he'd go, he'd say a band and I'd go that shit, and then so we eventually arrived at Prince, and we went okay, thank God we both like Prince. <laughs> <laughs> the music doesn't sound anything like Prince, though. But Prince is somebody though, it, it, not necessarily musical, but it, he's he's somebody who is an who writes great kind of classic pop songs, but produ produces them in a very odd sort of idiosyncratic way, and he also. He's also in control of the way, the way the images and the videos, and he's very much a kind of an individual, which is very inspiring. You know what's funny with you guys? Sometimes I don't know if you're serious or not. We're, we're never serious. You're we're never always... serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never know. You're just like big pranksters to me. No. No. But if this, no, of course we're not. But. It, it's easy. It's easy for us to be happy in real life, Arjun. But it's it's much more difficult for us to be sad, like most men. So that's why we write sad music. <laughs> I find I find happiness in the music, though. Well, that's good because there's hope in there, there's and hope. and hopefully people will find happiness from it, like we did. I have to ask you about the Kylie uh, collaboration because it's like it's fantastic, it's phenomenal. So congrats with which is getting her to do that. Thanks very much. It was it was a uh, it was a brave decision to ask. We just wrote. We just wrote her a little letter, and so, she said, "We just said hello, dear Kylie. We're hurts. We're two boys from Manchester. Will you please sing one our song?" And uh, she sent one back. And said, yes. That's so nice. So, um, were you together in the studio with her, or did she record the vocal somewhere else? No, we met in a studio in London, and we we both sang, which was, I mean, as you can imagine, the most surreal and amazing moment of your life. Yeah, she's an icon. Well, the great thing about it is when you're he hearing her sing a sad song, is quite powerful because she's got such a soft little voice. Yeah. Um, sadness in it is really. That's why we. It was either her or nobody, really, because because she was so because we were so good, she was so perfect for the song that it was kind of. If we hadn't have got her, we probably just would have left it. Because no one else would have done it. Just. You have a lot of fans in the gay community as well. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. What what is that? Uh, I mean, do you get a lot? Do you feel that love from the from the gay community? Yeah, I, 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 funny enough, when we first started doing shows, it was, there was a lot of, it was a big big part of the gay community used to come and see us play, and it was, I think it's, it's more so now. Perhaps it's because it's, men being emotional is very, uh, it appeals to, to women and, and, and obviously gay men alike. It's, it's not something that we see very often. And it's also um, something that connects, I think, as well. And, and also, um, there's a certain element which but very interesting. I guess there's a certain element of masculinity about it, which is uh to Say that again? There's a certain element of masculinity about I think as well about which, which is kind of um, which I think is quite appealing. Yeah. 
Is it usually that Theo does all the, uh, most of the talking and Adam is uh, just sitting there pretty? Because you're very ha you're very <laughs> handsome, Adam. You're very handsome. <laughs> We need I'll more talk. of you. Okay, talk to me. He can go. I've gone now. <laughs> What's the chemistry between the two of you like when you record together, when you write music together? Great chemistry. Perfect chemistry. Who's what, doing what? Do who's doing what, what? what you don't realize, Arjun, is I don't really do most of the talking. I, Adam's a ventriloquist. And he's got his hand behind my back, and he does all the talking, and I just put my mouth. I see your jokesters. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the music's very much. It started in a very like Adam did the music, I did the vocals. But I, over the years, it's it's kind of the two things have come together because we both understand we both understand what each other does. I think a lot. Of it's, um, but it's important the two that there's two sides of it because. That's what makes her what it is, is the, the, the difference in between us. Have you gotten some interesting offers to do, um, to write maybe uh, movie scores or be featured in commercials or, you know, interesting side projects? Um, well, we're waiting for the call from David Lynch. <laughs> I don't think he's got our number. Or Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, um, that would be something we'd love to do. Yeah. Movie soundtracks would be incredible. Because I think music's very visual. To us, it's a very visual thing, music, and it connects with, it's always connected with me, in a way, through visuals like nothing else, so it'd be a great thing, it'd be amazing. I could totally see like the Hertz fashion line, the Hertz fragrance, the Hertz, um, you know, frisbees, Combs. The, Hertz Combs. the Hertz Combs, yeah, Hertz everything. What would, what would a Hertz fragrance uh, smell like? Gin. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it smells like. <laughs> Gin and rose petals. That, that, that's lovely. That's totally <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. It was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed the music, so I hope it's going to do really well, and it seems like it does. So that's totally awesome. So congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks for all your support, Arjun, for so long. It's, it's really great. You bet. Thank you. Thanks very bye. much. Bye-bye.